Good morning everybody, good morning, good morning. Welcome once again, welcome, welcome. Uh, everybody everywhere to another podcast, hallelujah. To another podcast on the doctrine of God. I am your, I am your evangelist, Pastor Adrian Young from Adrian Young Christian Ministries Worship Center. Hallelujah, located at Hope Garden. We meet as a group every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Also, hallelujah, we, 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 you can find me on YouTube, YouTube, Pastor Adrian Young on YouTube. On Facebook, you can follow my Bible teaching on Facebook. Also, you can join my WhatsApp Bible study and prayer group. Adrian Young Christian Ministries is a non-profit charitable Christian organization where we believe the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the inspired word of God. We're charismatic. That means we flow under the power of the Holy Ghost. We also operate under the prophetic. We are non-denominational meaning that whatever denomination you belong to, you're welcome to share with us, to be a part of our audience. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We do charity street meetings and so on and so forth. We cater for the whole man and most importantly, we teach the word of God. Hallelujah. So we've been doing the doctrine of God and today we're going to be looking at, hallelujah, God in relation to his moral uh, uh, creatures. We're going to be looking at God's relation to his moral creatures and we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at his moral attributes, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our main textbook is Knowing the Doctrine of the Bible by Maya Perlman. This is what we used when we were when I was attending Bible school. This was one of our main textbooks at Bible school. So this is what I'll be teaching from. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We begin. We're going to look at God in relation to his moral creatures. We're going to be looking at God's moral attributes. Hallelujah. Reviewing the record of God's dealing with humankind, we learn that, one, God is holy. We find that in Exodus chapter 5 verse 11, Leviticus 11, 44 and 45, we saw it in Leviticus 20, verse 26, Joshua chapter 24, verse 19, 1 Samuel chapter 2, 2, Psalm 5, verse 4, Hallelujah, Psalm 111, verse 9, Psalm 145, verse 17, Isaiah 6, verse 3, Isaiah 43, 14, and 15, Jeremiah 23, verse 9, Luke 1, 49, James 1 13, 1 Peter 1 verse 15 and 16, Revelation 4 verse 8 and Revelation 15 verse 3 and 4. Hallelujah. So we see that God is holy in all of these chap in all of these scripture verses. Hallelujah. The holiness of God means is absolute moral purity. God is pure in his entirety. Hallelujah, so he's holy. Glory to God. He can neither sin nor tolerate sin. God can't sin. It's not a part of him. And he can't tolerate it. In what sense is God separated? He is separated from man in space. He's in heaven. Man is on earth. He is separated from man in nature and character. He is perfect. Man is imperfect. He is divine man is human he is morally perfect man is sinful hallelujah glory to god we see then that holiness is the attribute which which guards the distinction between god and the creature it denotes not merely an attribute of god but the divine nature itself therefore god Sorry. 
Therefore, when God reveals himself in a way that impresses man with his Godhead, he is said to sanctify man to himself. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 23, Ezekiel 38 verse 23. That is, he reveals himself as the Holy One. Glory to God. When the seraphim, when the seraphim describe the divine radiance emanating from him that sits on the throne, they cry, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 6 verse 3. Men are said to sanctify God when they, when they honor and, rever and reverence him as divine. Numbers chapter 20 verse 12, Leviticus 10 verse 3, Isaiah 8 13. When they dishonor him, sorry, when they dishonor him by the violation of his commandments, they are said to profane his name, which is opposite, which is the opposite of sanctifying or hallowing. Hallelujah, his name. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Hallelujah. Only God is holy in himself. Holy people, buildings and objects are so described because God has made them holy or sanctified them. The word holy applied to persons or objects in a term expressing a relationship to Jehovah. The fact of the being, the fact of being set apart for his service. Hallelujah. So those of us who are holy are set apart for God's service. Vessels are, that have been set aside for God's service are holy vessels. Buildings such as churches and so on and so forth that have been set aside, hallelujah, for God's use are called holy. Glory to God. So we, the people of God, are holy. Hallelujah. Because we have been set aside, we have been set apart for God's for God's service for God's use having been thus set apart articles must be clean and persons must consecrate themselves to live according to the law of holiness these facts constitute the basis of the doctrine of sanctification so when you when you purify yourself when you consecrate yourself according to the law of holiness you are sanctified sanctified mean you are holy hallelujah that is the reason why i don't support the view that christians are sinners saved by grace because you can't be a sinner and saved by grace at the same time christians were sinners but now are saved by grace and are sanctified that mean we are holy people we are no we are no no longer sinners but we are saints Hallelujah. We are saints, we are saved, and we are on our way to heaven. So God is righteous. What is the difference between holiness and righteousness? Righteousness is holiness in action. So when you are holy and you act in accordance to your holiness, you are said to be righteous. Hallelujah is one answer. Righteousness is God's holiness manifested in right dealing with his creatures. How God deal with, with his creatures is called righteousness, the righteousness of God. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Genesis 18.25 Righteousness is conformity to a right standard. It is right conduct in relation to others. When when does God manifest this attribute? One, when he clears the innocent and condemns the wicked and sees that, that justice is done. God judges, not as modern judges do, on evidence set before them by others. He discovers the evidence for himself. God judge person because of what he know about people not from what others tell them about people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thus the Messiah 
filled with the divine spirit does not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but judges with righteousness. Isaiah 11 verse 3. Two, when, when, he, when he pardons the, the penitent, Psalm 51 verse 14. 1 John chapter 1, 9, Hebrews 6 and verse 10, when he chastises and judges his people, these are ways that, oh God, expresses his righteousness. Hallelujah. Isaiah 8, 17, Amos chapter 3, verse 2, when he saves his people, hallelujah, he exercises an act of righteousness when he saves his people. God's interposition on behalf of his people is called his righteousness. Isaiah 46 verse 13, 45 verse 24 and 25. Salvation is the, is the negative side. Hallelujah. Salvation is the negative side. Righteousness is the positive side. He delivers his people from their sins and their enemies and the result is righteous is righteousness of heart isaiah 60 verse 21 hallelujah in the name of jesus praise of jesus glory to god hallelujah praise the name of jesus he delivers his people from their sins and from their enemies and the result is righteousness of heart. Isaiah 60 and verse 21, 54 and verse 13, 61 and verse 10, Isaiah 51 and verse 6, when he gives victory to the cause of his faithful servant. This is uh, uh, also a way in which he expressed righteousness. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 54 to 9, after God has delivered his people and judged the wicked, we shall have new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. Hallelujah. God not only deals righteously, but he requires righteousness. But what if the man has sinned? What if the man has sinned? Then he graciously imparts righteousness to, in other words, he justifies the penitent. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. This is the basis of the doctrine of justification. Hallelujah. It will be noted that the divine nature is the basis of God's dealing with man. As he is, so he acts. As God is, so he acts. God is righteous, so he acts righteousness. The Holy One sanctifies the righteous. The Holy One sanctifies, the righteous one justifies. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is faithful. He is absolutely trustworthy. You can trust God. He won't lie to you. His words will not fail. Therefore, his people may stand on his promises. Exodus 3 and verse 6. Hallelujah. Numbers 23 verse 19. Deuteronomy 431. Joshua 21. 43 to 45. Uh, Joshua 23 verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 15, 29. Jeremiah 4, 28. Isaiah 25 verse 1. Ezekiel 12 verse 25. Daniel 9, 4. Micah chapter 7 verse 20, Luke 18, 7 and 8, Romans chapter 3 verse 4, Romans chapter 15 verse 8, First Corinthians 1 verse 9, First Corinthians 10 verse 13, Second Corinthians 1 verse 20, First Thessalonians 5 and verse 24, Second Thessalonians 3 3, Second Timothy 2 verse 13, Hebrews 6 verse 18 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 1 Peter 4 verse 19 and Revelation 15 verse 3 Hallelujah God is merciful God's mercy is the, is the divine goodness exercised with respect to the mysteries 
of his creatures, his, the miseries of his creatures. I read again. God's mercy is the divine goodness exercised with respect to the uh, miseries of his creatures. Feeling for them, he's feeling for them, and making provision for their relief. And in the case, making provision for, yes, and in the case of the impenitent sinner, leading to long suffering and patience. Hallelujah. Hodges. This, this is the statement coming from Hodges. Hodges. Titus, 3, 5, uh, Titus 3 verse 5, Lamentation 3 verse 22, Daniel chapter 9 verse 9, Jeremiah 3 verse 12, Psalm 32 verse 5, Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 13, 54 and verse 7. For one of the most beautiful Hallelujah. Description, one of the most beautiful description of the mercy of God. Yes. For one of the most beautiful descriptions of the mercy of God, see Psalm 103, verse 8 to 18. The knowledge of His mercy becomes a ground of hope. Hallelujah. The knowledge of God's mercy becomes a ground ground of her of hope we find that in psalm 130 verse 7 and a ground of trust we find that in psalm 52 verse 8 god's mercy was preeminently manifested in sending christ into the world luke 1 verse 78 hallelujah god is love Love is the attribute of God by reason of which he desires a personal relation with those who bear his image and essentially with those who have been made holy and are like him in character. Notice how God's love is described. Deuteronomy 7, 8, Ephesians 2, verse 4, Zephaniah 3, verse 17, Isaiah 49, 15, and 16, Romans 8, 39, Hosea 11 and verse 4, Jeremiah 31, 3, notice to whom it is manifested, John 3, 16, hallelujah, John 16, 37, John 17, 23, Deuteronomy 10, 18, notice how it was, notice how it was exhibited, John 3, 16, 1 John 4, 9, and 10 Romans chapter 9, 11 and 13, 1 John chapter 3, 1, Isaiah 43, 3 and 4, Isaiah 63 verse 9, Titus chapter 3 verse 4 to 7, Isaiah 38 verse 17, Ephesians 2 verse 4 and 5, Hallelujah, Hosea 11 and verse 4, Hallelujah, Deuteronomy 7 and verse 13, Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. The goodness of God is that attribute by reason of which he imparts life and other blessing to his creatures. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 25 verse 8. Nahum 1 verse 7. Psalm 145 verse 9. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Hallelujah. Psalm 25 verse 8. Nahum chapter 1 verse 7. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 145 verse 9. Glory to God. Romans 2 verse 4. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. Psalm 31 verse 19. Hallelujah. Acts 14 verse 17. Psalm 68 verse 10, Psalm 85 verse 5, hallelujah, writes Dr. Howard Agnew Johnson. Dr. Howard Agnew Johnson writes, some years ago I was invited to a home for dinner. The host asked me to, to say grace. After the blessing was asked and our thanks expressed for the gifts of God, Uh, spread for the gift that God spread before us 
he said rather bro uh, <laughs> bluntly really now i don't see much point to that for i provided this meal myself for we for we reply we ask hallelujah so he said dr howard agnew johnson he said some years ago i was invited to a home for dinner hallelujah the host asked me to say grace after the blessing was asked and and our thanks expressed for the gifts of god spread before us he said rather bluntly really now i don't see much point uh, to that for i provided this meal myself for replied we asked had you ever stopped to think that if uh, seed time and harvest should fail once on the whole earth half the people would 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 be dead before another harvest and had it occurred to you that if seed time and harvest should fail two years in succession over the entire family uh, um, um planet everyone living would be dead before another harvest Evidently astonished, he admitted that he had never thought of such possibility. Then we suggested that he was very much mistaken in saying that he had furnished the meal set before us. God had given him his own life and from his, and his power to, uh, to get grain. God had put life into grain and animals uh, which we were using for food which we could never do hallelujah now glory to god hallelujah thank you jesus we must suggest that he had been a laborer together with god by entering into God's laws for the provision of our needs. Then we said, if anyone should give you something, you would say, thank you. And if the gifts should be repeated two or three times a day, you would say, thank you each time. He quickly agreed. Now you understand why we say thank you to God each time we receive his blessing. To this he exclaimed, why that is just being <laughs> decent to say something uh, to say nothing of being intelligently thankful hallelujah glory to god praise the name of jesus to some the existence of evil and suffering presents an obstacle to believe in the goodness of god why did god why did a god of love create a world with so much suffering they ask the following consideration may cast some light on the problem one god is not responsible for evil note that everybody god is not responsible for evil hallelujah if the careless workman throws sand into a delicate machine should the manufacturer be held responsible god made everything good but man marred his work subtract from the subtract from the suffering of the world all that is due to man's willful sin and there would be there would not be so much left god being almighty evil exists by his permission evil only exists by god's permission but he isn't the cause of evil the cause of evil is man's willful act of sin hallelujah god being almighty evil exists by his permission so he only permit evil to exist but he isn't the cause of evil hallelujah we cannot in every instance understand why he permits evil for his ways are past finding out to the over superlative he would say 
What is that to you? <laughs> Follow me. Let's not try to figure out why God permit evil. Just follow him. Hallelujah. Just do what he says. Glory to God. Yet we can understand a part of his ways, sufficient to know that he makes no mistakes. Wrote a Stevenson, the noted, uh, the noted author. If I am from a spy hole looking with uh, purblind eyes upon a a least part of a fraction of the universe, yet perceive in my own uh, uh, destiny some broken evidence of a plan and some signals of an overruling goodness. Shall I then be so mad as to complain that all cannot be uh, deciphered, deciphered? Shall I not rather wonder with infinite and grateful uh, surprise that in so vast a scheme I seem to have been able to read however little and that little was encouraging to faith. God is so great that he can overrule evil for good. Hallelujah. God is so great that he can overrule evil for good. Hallelujah. Remember how he overruled the wickedness of Joseph's brethren, Pharaoh, Herod, and those who rejected and crucified Christ. An evident scholar has well said that God Almighty would in no way permit evil in his works were, were he not so omnipotent and good that even out of evil he can work good come on many a christian has come out of the fires of our suffering with character purified and faith strengthened so the evil that god allow is for our own good because through the trials and suffering we build character if the trials and sufferings weren't here, we wouldn't have built our character in such a way that our faith are unshakable. Hallelujah. If evil wasn't present, we wouldn't know how to stand strong against evil because there wouldn't be any evil to stand strong against. We wouldn't exercise our right to choose if God had not allowed evil. The fact that God allowed good and evil to exist, hallelujah, it is to help us to strengthen our faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Suffering has passed them into the bosom of God. Suffering has been the coin wherewith they have brought character they have bought character tried in the fire. God has arranged the universe according to natural laws, and these laws imply the per the per the person the possibility of accidents. For example, if a person carelessly or deliberately steps off a precipice, he suffers the consequence of violating the law of gravity. Yet we are glad for these laws, for otherwise the world would be in a, in a state of confusion. It should always be remembered that this is not the perfect order of things. God has another life and a future age in which to vindicate all his dealings because his because he works according to all according to heavenly standard time is eternal nothing that we are going through will last forever it's only temporary hallelujah god is going to vindicate himself when he's going to he's going to make everything right again just the way he made it at first we may think that he delays, yet he avenges his elect speedily. Luke 18, 7 and 8. God must not be judged until the curtain has fallen on the last scene of the drama of ages. Then we shall see that he hath done all things well. Now this is the part 
about God that confused many people. The Trinity of God. Hallelujah. What are we studying today? We're studying the doctrine of God. Now we're going to look at the Trinity of God. Hallelujah. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We're going to, we're going to look at the Trinity of God. Hallelujah. The doctrine stated, the scripture teach that God is one and that beside him there is no God. The question that the question might arise, how could God have any fellow? Let's take it from the top. The scripture teach that God is one and that beside him there is no God. The question might arise, how could God have any fellowship before our finite creatures came into existence? The answer is that the divine unity is a compound unity. The divine unity is a compound unity. And that in this unity, there are really three distinct persons, every one of whom is Godhead. Hallelujah. Yet in a supremely conscious and yet is supremely conscious of the other two. So we see that there, so we see that there was an eternal fellowship before any finite creature were created. Therefore, God was never alone. God always exists in a compound being. The fact that God is love tells you that there must be, there must be, there must have been before anything were, was made, there must have been someone that he shared that love with, those passion with. Hallelujah. Because passion is an act of love. It comes out of love or hate. Hallelujah. For the believer, love is what fuels our passion. Hallelujah. We preach to people out of love for them. We encourage people to turn from sin out of love for them. Hallelujah. We try to feed the hungry and close the naked out of love for our fellow men. Love causes us to forgive even the most evil of people. Love causes us to overlook the wrongs. Love causes us to see people for, for what they will become and not for what they are. Hallelujah. Fellowship before any finite creature were created. Therefore, God was never alone. Not that there are three gods. So learn this. There are not three gods. It's one God that exists in a compound, in a compound um, union. Hallelujah. Not that there are three gods, all of whom are independent and self-existent. All of them are not independent and are self-existent. The three cooperate with one mind and purpose so that in the, in the truest sense of the word, they are one because all of them think the same way and act the same way and involve in everything that governs this entire universe. They are one. So God is one. Hallelujah. The Father creates, the Son redeems, and the Holy Spirit sanctifies. Hallelujah. And yet in each operation, the three are present. The three were present in creation. The three are present in redemption. And the three are present in sanctification. One God. Hallelujah. The Father is preeminently creator. Yet the Son and the Spirit are described as cooperating in that work. The Son is preeminently the Redeemer, yet God, the Father, and the Spirit are described as sending the Son to redeem. The Holy Spirit is the Sanctifier, yet the Father and the Son cooperate in that work. Hallelujah. So it's one God cooperating in all aspects, in all, in all things that governs the laws of this entire universe. The Trinity, is an in, the Trinity is an eternal fellowship, but the work of man's redemption called forth its 
historical manifestation. The son entered the world in a new way when he took to himself human nature and he was given a new name, Jesus. And the word Jesus means Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit entered the world in a new way that is as the Spirit of Christ. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ embodied in the church. Where does the Spirit of, God, of Christ lies? In the church. In you and I who are believers. Hallelujah. And he will be in the church forever. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit entered the world in a new way. That is, as the Spirit of Christ embodied in the church. And yet all three work together. The Father testified of the Son, Matthew 3, 17. And the Son testified of the Father, John 5, 19. The Son testified of the Spirit, John 14, verse 26. And later the Spirit testified of the Son, John 15, verse 26. Hallelu Hallelujah. Does all this seem difficult to comprehension? How could it be otherwise since we attempt since we are attempting to describe the inner life of, of, uh, of Almighty God. The doctrine of the Trinity is clearly revealed. The doctrine of the Trinity clearly a revealed doctrine and not one conceived by human reason. It's a revealed doctrine. It's not just one that came out of human reasoning. God reveals it in the scripture. So I don't know how some persons go in the same Bible and don't see from the Bible that God is a compound being. He's a trinity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One being, yet he have three. Yet that one being have three distinct personality. But they do not act independently of each other, thus making it one God, the Godhead, hallelujah, or the Trinity. Does all, does all this seem difficult of comprehension? How could it be otherwise, since we are attempting to describe the inner life of the of Almighty God. The doctrine of the Trinity is clearly a revealed doctrine and not one conceived by human reason. How else could we learn of the inner nature of the Godhead except by revelation? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 16. It is true that the word Trinity does not appear in the New Testament. It is a theological expression invented during the second century to describe the Godhead. But the planet Jupiter existed before it was named. So the Trinity exists before it was named Trinity. And, <laughs> and the doctrine of the Trinity was in the Bible before it was technically called the Trinity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We're going to finish. Hallelujah. We're going to finish the doctrine of the Trinity when we meet again for study of the doctrine of the Bible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can follow this series on my YouTube channel. Subscribe. Go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe, Pastor Adrian Young. And you will catch all of these teaching in its entirety. Glory to God. You can join me on Facebook every day for teaching on the books of the Bible. You can also join my WhatsApp Bible study and prayer group. Hallelujah. Every day, so, sorry, every Tuesday we have a study on the doctrines of the Bible. But every morning we have our prayer starting at 4 a.m. 
and on our evening prayer starting at 7.30 p.m. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? Catch me not tomorrow but on Friday morning for probably I'll teach tomorrow night, I'm not sure, depending on what time I return from work. But we're going to look at the doctrine of the Trinity being defined. We're going to look at how it has been defi defined, the doctrine of the Trinity. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, everybody, and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Have a good and godly day.